I checked out a couple episodes. I started with the the one you just did with Paul Charchian. Oh, yeah? I was like, oh, fantasy football, yeah, that'll be accessible. And then I was like, wait, do I have to be that good at tasting whiskey <laughs> to be on this show? <laughs> I'm so out of my depth here. Yeah. <laughs> and then I listened to the Guar episode, and I was yeah. like, okay, okay, all right, I think yeah. I can land somewhere in there. The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey, by Michter's, and by Heaven Hill Brands. All right, man, Rob from The Revivalist. How you doing, brother? Welcome to Bourbon and Beyond. Good morning. How you doing? Fantastic. You feeling good? Yeah. You got you got your real good. Uh, real good. When do you when do you go on? We are at I don't know six ish something oh, like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys are the uh, uh, that's what we would call like the the upper crust of uh, of the musicians. Yeah, they, I feel like we're always kind of the bottom of the upper crust. It's us, and then it's like the people you definitely heard of, like oh, Alanis Morissette, who I gotta stick around for. I, I'm just saying, if I knew you mm. when you were young, uh-huh. we would be getting high. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> There he is. No, that's that's a song. It's like my favorite song. I think it's probably everyone's favorite song of y'all's. Yeah, that yeah. tracks. It's a great song. I feel like it's is it, it's been in a few movies. Has it been in a few mu- movies and stuff? Uh, TV shows? Yeah, it shows up every now and again. Yeah. Um, there was a blue moon. There was a blue moon commercial that was pretty nice. Uh, well, back I'm trying to think which shows. It's been. Yeah, you know, it turns up every pops up every now and again. Yeah. Now, all right. So what we're going to do here? Uh, we are actually going. I'm gonna. Uh, for our live audience here, I've got a little little graphic that I got won't pop in here. Well, look at that! What? 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 Look at that! That's all. Yeah, I mean, I I've got some this I got some tech, tech skills here. Are you from the future? I'm from the future. So now I'm the young one for you. Uh, yeah, nice. it's, I'm getting weird. <laughs> Time um, travel. So all right, so you're a New Orleans boy. Um, I got some. Uh, mm-hmm. I got some whiskey from um, from Louisiana. That's pretty cool. I want to taste with you. It's, it's it's out of left field, actually. It's a little different. But first, I want there's a. I want to taste some Jack, some Jack Ten with you. This was uh, this was in my top ten of uh, best uh, whiskeys last year. You got your glass Excellent. there. Excellent. There we go. At, well, how early do you normally mm-hmm. drink? Uh, in New Orleans, it's kind of whenever you get a, I always like to say you can, uh, the cool thing about New Orleans is that you can take your drink from the bar and then bring it into church with you on a Sunday morning. <laughs> do you ever, do you ever play at church? Like, cause that's a thing there. Like they go all out and, uh, and, and musical albums there. It's been, uh, we have, we haven't gotten too many opportunities for churches yet. Uh, we've recorded in a couple studios that used to be churches, but that's okay. about as close as we get. Despite the somewhat religious sounding name we have. Now, do you all do, do, you all do uh, Jazz Fest like, oh, all yes. the time? Yeah, every, I think every year but one since uh, since about 2012, 2011. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, mm. a, special, it's a special area, like, but I, I will tell you, bad shit happens to me in New Orleans, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, one time I got, I, when I was younger, uh, I got so hammered. Um, I think I'm pretty sure somebody roofied me. Somebody roofied me at one of these <laughs> random bars, and I woke up next to like the, the homeless area where they were warming their hands over trash cans, which was weird because it was like March, so it wasn't that yeah, cold. Yeah, it's New Orleans. But you know, I suppose if it gets 60 degrees there, you all get cold. Yeah, that's that's bundle up time for us. But how is New Orleans these days? Uh, hot as crap, extremely warm. Uh, pretty wet, uh, you know, infrastructure failing at, at every direction, yeah. but still, you know, just a beautiful, magical place to live. All kinds of trumpets and saxophones yeah. on the street. Just every time the wind kicks up, they're flying around, blowing in the air. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's it's a beautiful, difficult place to live. Um, you know, there's there's so much there's so much to the city, and it's it's been so much to so many people over so many. It's thriving as much as anybody can in these days. But yeah. You know. Well, this is uh, this is a Jack Daniels ten year old. Um, this I want to kind of go through like the motions of tasting with mm-hmm. you. We first analyze the color. When it goes into the barrel, it's as clear as the water from your tap. Swirled around a little bit, bring it to your nose. 
when you uh, when you smell uh, whiskey, you want to smell it with your mouth open because it relaxes your olfactory. You can breathe, you know, even taste it on the way out a little bit. Do you have a breathing mechanism when you're playing the saxophone? Um, like, just do you, uh, do you hold your breath. Get as much as I can. I mean, how do you do that? Well, I some people can do a can do circular breathing where you can hold it forever, but that takes like you have to learn how to do that, and it's hard. So I don't want to. Uh, basically, just I try to breathe around the side, like around the sides of it, because you have the mouthpiece in your mouth, kind of blocking yeah. off here. And if you pull, if you pull your mouth off of it and you break your armature, then you you kind of end up like getting unset and reset. Mm -hmm. So I try to breathe quickly around the sides of my mouth, like a. <sighs> okay. Now, um, you're very familiar in mm. thinking about your mouth and how it is positioned all the time. So that's, uh, I'm imagining this next step is going to be very, you'll recognize it. Mm -hmm. Like you just really want to focus on your tongue. Like think about all the parts of your tongue. How does the whiskey feel? Um, do you feel it on the tip? Do you feel it in the middle? Do you feel mm -hmm. it in the back, the middle sides? Uh, you know, because we taste on different parts of our tongue. So you get the sweetness on the tip, you get the savory in the middle, you get the uh, spice in the back, and then you get like a little, uh, you get a kind of a uh, bitter note between like the middle and the back. So let's taste here and use some of that saxophone training of your familiarity of your mouth. Oh man. That's something pretty good to start the day with right there. Mm. Breakfast. Good Lord. Jack Daniels has been putting out some great stuff, but there's like a note I'm getting in this that's like pancakes. Like, I keep getting these like maple syrup pancakes from them here lately. Well, that's delicious. Mm. Where are you noticing it on your tongue? What part mm. of the tongue? Feels like a lot the tip. Okay, like, like the sweet area. Tip. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I've always felt like Jack Daniels always seems to have a bit of a sweetness to it. Yeah. Like I think that's part of the reason that it's, you know, it's so ubiquitous is that it's it's got a bit of that more accessibility, yeah. which I like, you know, I don't I don't have a I don't have too refined a palate. Oh, I admit uh, in preparation for this, I was I checked out a couple episodes. I started with the the one you just did with Paul Charchian. Oh yeah. I was like, oh, fantasy football. Yeah, that'll be accessible. And then I was like, wait, do I have to be that good at tasting whiskey <laughs> to be on this show? <laughs> I'm so out of my depth here. Yeah. <laughs> and then I listened to the Guar episode, and yeah. I was like, okay, okay, all right. I think yeah. I can land somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, thank God uh, you wouldn't fit in here yeah. if it was Guar. Yeah. You know, like all their weird stuff. Then you'd shoot me with blood and. Thing. Only blood, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say blink that the other part. <laughs> yeah, they kept they kept trying to get you to say it on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they kept trying. That was fun. They uh, they're a fun group. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's funny, like when they get in character. Like I know all those guys, but you know when they're in character. They will not break character at all. It's crazy. So when you are playing the, the saxophone, like one of the things I've noticed, mm -hmm. like uh, trumpet players, saxophone players, trombone, like those cheeks, like. The, like you guys like have like, yeah. amazing muscles in here. Do you have like some kind of workout you do for your jaw or your cheek area or anything like that? I most I mean it mostly just comes from playing the horn. Um, I usually when I get it out of the case, I warm up on just the mouthpiece for a little while, and I think that helps really mm -hmm. focus on on like the cheeks and the jaw area and strengthening this. And it's fun because it sounds like a duck call. And so everybody will be on stages and stuff, and I'll just be walking around going, and everybody's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> now, lead singers, they'll lose their voice, right? So they'll mm. lose their voice, and they can't play. Is there anything like that for a saxophonist that you, if you, like, uh, you hurt your stomach or you have, like, a bad throat, is there anything that would keep you from playing? Um, not really keep me from playing, but if I'm... Uh, if I've been on vacation or something, like if I've been at the beach for a week and I haven't really been able to pick up the horn and, and go straight back to a show, then sometimes like your chops can kind of get blown out is what it's mm -hmm. called, where your mouth can't really hold its shape and right. the notes just kind of come out sounding a little flabby. Okay. Now, what, where do you, um, like we were talking earlier about where you all own the bill today. I said you're, I said you're the upper cross. You said you're the <laughs> lower part of the upper cross, which I disagree with. <laughs> Uh, where do you where what's where what what's new for you all? What do you guys got coming up? 
Uh, well, a lot of it's just been, you know, the spirit of 2022 for everybody in the music industry right now is just the excitement of, you know, being back at it. I mean, even this festival, you guys took two years yeah. off, right? I think every, I just, all around, everything is so go, go, go right now. And everybody's just so excited to be back. And we love like going to festivals like this because we always see get to see people who are friends from on the road that, you know, you never like I never hang out with friends who are in like bands that live in Denver or whatever because they live in Denver. Right. But you just see but like you just see people uh, a couple times a year. And it's really great to have that kind of the extended family getting back together. Yeah. And so that that's really the excitement around the industry. And then. It is, it is exciting, but also, uh, like, some parts of the country didn't take any time off. Yeah. You know? Uh, New Orleans was, it was a little yeah, bit in the middle. Yeah, I, th- I, think, I think we did good. I think there are reasons to be critical of the mayor in New Orleans, but personally, yeah. I think, like, I, w- I was okay with people being kind of heavy-handed with the COVID and stuff, because, you know, it was scary. And it, it was, was scary. Thing. Like, we're learning a little bit more now, but, like, well, yeah. well, we didn't know then. Yeah. You know, we didn't know then. Yeah, and, nobody knew anything. And never... who wanted to be a politician at that time? You're you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Exactly, yeah. So. Like, I think our mayor saved lives and is going to burn for it next election. Yeah, there you go. But, I mean, she's also, like, doing other sketchy stuff, so. <laughs> There's that m- taking money on the side kind of deal. Well, know, I mean, it's that's par for the course in Louisiana. Yeah, it's Louisiana politics. Yeah, it's wrong. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like, well, hello there. You got a bag of money for me? I'm going <laughs> to. All right. So this is a new brand that really kind of caught my eye. It's from Louisiana. Like, I don't know if you can tell. It, they put it a little bit on there. Yeah. This is uh, what we just had was uh, made. You know, it was mm-hmm. Jack Daniels, 10-year-old. That was made from predominantly... Uh, corn. Um, hmm. This is made out of 100% rice, and you know it's it's made in uh, you know I don't know exactly where it's made. Uh, the Pro- their Providence Distillers. I don't know the area well enough, but I would assume that they're if it, they're using rice, they're in a marshy area hmm. filled with alligators, which terrify me. Alligators terrify me. Have you ever had a close call with an alligator? No, I've never been too close to one. Uh, really, I think really most of my experience with alligator, uh, they're already fried up and on a platter for me. Ah! <laughs> they're not too scary like that. Not too scary when you're already eating them. By the way, yeah. alligator is good eating. Yeah, basically chicken nuggets. Yeah, and, and then if you look at like some of the, uh, some of the, like the right predators way. in the world that will eat them, mm. like they go out of their way to eat alligators, like pumas, jaguars, leopards. Jeez. They'll just jump right in the water. You know. I don't. I don't understand being excited about fighting an alligator to the death. Yeah. Like well, let somebody else do it. I'll, I'll. I'll eat it at. I'll eat it at Frankie and Johnny's or something. I guess if you're a. If you're a big cat though, you like mm. your odds because you got those big claws. Yeah. And big teeth. So. All right. Here big we go. Remember energy. your training. Remember your training. I'll look at it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Give it a nose here. And a taste. A little bit of Louisiana in that glass. Mm. It's really good. Mm. So we're just tasting uh, JT Mellick. You all are going on at, um, the Revivalists are going on at 6 o'clock here at Bourbon & Beyond, somewhere around there. You got your set list ready? You ready to go? Oh, I have no idea what we're playing. I love that. I love that. I I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, we'll we'll probably do Wish I Knew You for you, but... Well, if, if, if you don't do that song, there's going to be some protest. I'm yeah, that's that's generally how it goes. I'm just saying. And uh, if I did know you when I was young, we'd have done a lot of drugs together. Well, we did a few today. <laughs> well, hey, Rob, thanks for coming on, man. It's really great hanging out. Uh, I can't wait to see you all on stage. I will actually get to see you today. I'm usually really busy at these things, but I'm, I'm going to be able to come hang out oh, and cool. watch you all. Yeah, so, if you want to if you want to come side stage, have a sip. Oh, hell. Have Please to. do. Hey, now, I used to play the saxophone. Oh, really? Yeah, back in the day. I yeah. stopped. I got kicked out of band <laughs> because I flipped off the band teacher. But other than that... Well, it was like, his fault. If, you know, I'll step in for you. Just yeah. give me the, the yeah, fresh read and I'm in. Yeah, you come... Okay, yeah, you come with the bottle. I'll hand you the sax. I'll chug the bottle. Boom. And Deal. Then I, and then everyone will leave when I start playing. <laughs> so, hey, thanks for coming on, man. Of course. Good thanks luck for having today. me. And, this is a blast. Uh, you, uh, you, you held up. You did great. You did great. 
man. Definitely, you know, thanks for not spitting anything on me like before. Okay. Cheers, it's brother. Delicious. Cheers.